Hey everybody, it's Justice for Comics. It is Friday, uh, end of the week here. Thought I would shoot a quick video on the CBSI Hot 10 list for the week. Um, it's a list compiled every week of books that are on the move, books that have some heat to them. Some of them are older books, some of them are brand new. It's kind of a nice little compilation. Uh, our friends at CBSI compile this every week uh, in Ben. Our good friend Ben Stein, Stein Niger, I think his name is, uh, he compiles this. So let's review it, jump into it. I'll give you my review and comments as well. So this just posted not too long ago. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Okay. Let's start off with the honorable mentions. Uh, the first one here is Seven Seas Comics, number four. This definitely looks like an older book. Uh, you've got a Baker cover. Uh, kind of a famous cover, our famous artist, uh, Matt Baker. I think he passed away a long time ago. He, all of his covers are basically really popular, especially for uh, Golden Age comic book collectors. He's sort of one of the most sought after uh, for his cover work. And yeah, he did great work, no doubt about it. Beautiful cover, especially for that time. Uh, I would imagine seeing that on the rack, it would definitely stand out as being much different than most of the artists of the day. Um, kind of like if you saw Frazetta covers, <laughs> just nobody that really drew like him uh, at that time. So again, Baker cover, female underwater, there's a shark, some nice elements to a nice cover. I love the red top uh, of the cover. It's, it's a beautiful looking cover, piece of artwork really. Uh, 3.5 sold for $7,800 this week. Almost double what a 3.0 sold for just six months ago. So basically, you know, if if you've if you're a comic book collector that has pretty much all modern bronze, e even a lot of Silver Age books, uh, this would definitely definitely be a, an area that you'd want to start collecting. And I would have as your eBay search, anything that says Matt Baker that pops up. Um, there's a lot of people that are looking for these type of covers on auctions, eBay, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, beautiful cover. Definitely re deserves an honorable, honorable mention for sure uh, at that price. Uh, another honorable mention is Something is Killing the Children, number eight, the Jeff DeCall 1 in 25 variant. I do own this book. In fact, I owned two of these at one time believe it or not, uh, right on my own channel. Um, I I think the week this came out, I told people on my channel that this is a good buy. I would buy this book. I bought two of them on eBay, on uh, not eBay. I bought two of them on Midtown and paid $66 for each of them. Um, I sold one for like $150 a week later, which of course more than paid for both of them. Um, I don't regret doing that. Obviously, you just never know what something is going to do. But this book has exploded in value. A 9.8 just sold for $700. Uh, I think a week or two before that, one had sold around four to $500 range. So, um, yeah, this book is definitely on the move. It says here a, a raw copy is available on eBay at the moment and has five days left, and it's almost at $400. Um I've had people message me on Instagram who know that I own this book because I've posted about it on my Instagram before. I've had unsolicited offers, people offering me uh, you know, quite a bit of money to buy it, and I've turned it down, obviously. I, it's, it's one of my hot covers of last year. I think it was the top cover. So I've been all over this book way before everybody else was talking about it. Um, I mentioned it. I love the, the design of the cover, the coloring. I mean, it's just a really unique piece of artwork. Um, and I see this book being hot for a while. I mean, as long as this this comic book series is hot, that's obviously fueling it. Everyone loves this, um, this comic book series. It's doing extremely well, especially for an independent book. It's doing amazing. But yeah, that cover is absolute fire, and I'm very, very happy and proud to have that in my comic book collection for sure. All right, let's move on to number 10 on the list. Killmonger number one, the second print. 
This book came out a few years ago. It's not that old. Um, all things Black Panther right now are doing fairly well in the aftermarket. Um, yeah, just a couple weeks ago, there was a couple books about Wakanda. Um, Wakanda books were on the on the list. Uh, this was a twenty to thirty dollar book. Now it's around fifty dollars. Um, yeah, Ben writes here. I really hope that if they bring if they bring Killmonger back, he keeps the hard edge that he had initially. So obviously, we know that he died at the end of the Black Panther movie. Spoiler alert! <laughs> but who knows? May, maybe they, maybe he didn't really die. Maybe they brought him back. Um, yeah, I think that's something that they could explore. Obviously, having Michael B. Johnson. Uh, Michael B. Jordan, rather, as the actor would be good. I think I can't imagine anybody else playing the Killmonger. I, th I think he was perfect for that role. Um, so, yeah, I could see that. It's a cool cover, and it's a second print, probably low print run. Not a lot of people were probably paying attention too much to this book, so I could see why that's a hot book. So that is your number 10 book. Number 9 is Spawn 174. Uh, first, I think this is the first appearance of... Gunslinger Spawn. Now, there's been news announcements that Todd McFarlane is expanding the Spawn universe, as he's calling it. Four new titles are, are going to be coming out this year. This is going to be one of them. Uh, Gunslinger Spawn will have his own ongoing series. Um, obviously, that's making this original piece uh, this original 174 book going up a lot. Nine eights have gone from about 500 to about 650. Um, yeah, I could see this being a thousand dollar book, no doubt about it. It is a cool looking cover. Um, I guess there's also a cameo in issue 119, so that might be something to keep your eye on. Um, but yeah, all things spawn. This is the year of spawn. I think spawn is just doing very, very well. Sa sales have been excellent. McFarlane uh, is getting a lot of recognition that he obviously deserves and always should have had, but it's nice to see him really doing well with uh, with Spawn. Number eight is The Walking Dead number one. Probably one of the most well-known, expensive, independent comic books. Uh, it's up there with the Turtles and uh, Bone and all that. It's, you know, the, the nine eights have always been fairly expensive on this book. Um. Yeah, they're back. In, they're back in. Uh, back on the list. Uh, four years ago, it says here nine eight. Uh, are back up to three thousand. PGX nine point eight sold for twenty nine fifty. Um, for those that kept saying that this book would continue to fall down to a thousand dollars, oops. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. That there was a a window of time that I think there was a couple sales in the two thousand to twenty five hundred dollar range. Uh, probably a good buy. I, I, that could be the low. Now that the series ended, of course, that everyone thought, oh, that's it for The Walking Dead. It's it's over. Um, but there seems to be a resurgence. I mean, that's always going to be a book that I think a lot of uh, comic book collectors are always going to have their eye on is is Walking Dead number one in high grade. So. Uh, it's definitely a key book for sure. Number seven is Marvel uh, number five, the Adam Hughes one in 25 variant. Um, it's at about double ratio, it's around $50. I, I remember seeing this. I wasn't impressed with the cover. I didn't think it was that great. It, it doesn't jump out at you. The colors are very muted. Um, I mean, the art is okay. It's a, it's, it's a typical Adam Hughes um, cover. I mean, I, I don't think it's his best. I passed on it. I easily could have bought one. Uh, I think Midtown had it around $40. So Midtown had it kind of jacked up. They didn't have it near ratio anyways, but, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes Adam Hughes covers do really well. I, I don't see this one doing well long term. Um, it's just, it's just not that, that dynamic of a cover. So, I don't know. Is it going to stay at fifty dollars? Go higher? Who knows? I, I think this could easily go back down towards ratio at some point. Number six is Star Wars: The High Republic, the Walmart variant. So, for those of you that live near WalMarts that 
get a lot of comic books. The ones near me do not, so I don't even bother going to look anymore. It's pretty much not going to happen. Um, but if you happen to be at your local Walmart, you may want to check the comic book aisle. It's usually near the cashier's aisles. Uh, if you happen to see that book there, you may want to grab it up. That would be a good flip. I think they're like, you usually come in a pack. It'll be like 10 bucks. Um, and I think I saw on eBay that these are going for like 30 to $40. So there's money to be made on these packs. If you can get them for like $10, flip it for 30. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's a cool looking cover. I kind of like it a little bit better than the regular, the regular, uh, cover that came out. So time to hit up those Walmarts. Number five is a awesome key book, Batman Adventures number 12. First appearance of Harley Quinn. She's on the cover. This book has always had a lot going for it. It's always going to be in demand. Print run is, was pretty low, uh, especially for a book in the 90s uh, or early 2000s, whenever this book came out. I think it was late 90s. Um, so it's always going to have a collector's attention. It is tough to find in high grade. I don't know how many 9.8s are on the census, but... Um, probably not as much as you think. Uh, looks like it hit around $3,000 this past week, hitting an all-time high. Uh, ben says, remember a year ago when you could have bought this same book for less than half that figure? Um, all I know is that I will tell my kids to buy everything if and when another pandemic hits. <laughs> so, yeah, there were some fantastic deals last year during the pandemic, just people flipped out and no doubt about it. Some people needed money, needed cash, especially if your business is shut down. Um, you know, some people put a lot of money in the bank and other people put a lot of their money in comic books. So, <laughs> um, the time to buy is when people are selling, right? People are panicking. And that obviously turned out to be a pretty nice time to pick up some deals. And you'll never go wrong buying a first appearance of a major character like Harley Quinn. Um, I don't, you know, Harley Quinn is not Batman or any other major character like that. But it's it's always going to be a, a pretty well-known character. Um, I could see more and more movies down the road. Yeah, it's always going to be a character that people are going to be interested in. And definitely a key book. So I don't have it in my collection, unfortunately. I've passed it up many times. I probably could have bought... I've looked at nine sixes, I think, in the four to five hundred dollar range, many, many times. Um, never quite pulled the trigger. I don't know why. I mean, probably should have, but yeah, it's just one of those books. If you can find a good deal, I would get one. It's a great book to have long term in the collection. Number four is Black Cotton. Number one, new series by Scout Comics. Um, yeah, Scout Comics are starting to be on the list a lot. I mean, I've noticed the last month or so they've had a couple different books on the list. This one has an interesting premise. There's, as far as I know, there's no retail incentives on this. I guess there might be a couple of retailer, retailer exclusives. But selling around $15 right now, obviously a $2.99, $3.99 book, whatever it was, Selling at $15, it's done well. I grabbed one. I have it on my pull list. I'd like to at least pick up the first couple of issues, see if it's a good read. Um, I don't know. It, it's basically flip-flopping the way society looks like today where um, the people that seem to be in charge are no longer in charge. Uh, there's some definitely racial controversy to this. Um, this comic book, that's probably one of the reasons it's, it's hot at the moment. Um, but yeah, if you happen to see that at your local shop, you may want to grab that one for cover, especially number three is taskmaster. Number three, the Shane Davis one in 25 variant. Uh, I've talked about this book quite a bit on my channel. I've posted on Instagram. I told people this may not be a bad book to buy around $50. Uh, I got my copy for $39 shipped. And I've done really well on it. It's selling, yeah, around 150 to 175. I think the prices are, have cooled a little bit on it, but it is a tough book to find. The print run on this is low. 
Not a lot of shops ordered 25 copies of Taskmaster number three. So long term, this could be one of those books that all of a sudden one day people are paying four or $500 for just because it is a cool, it is a cool looking cover and it's super rare. There's not a lot of these out there. So especially for a one in 25. Uh, if you go on eBay, there may be a handful of, for sale, but uh, there were a couple weeks where there was no, there was none of these on, on eBay. So that tells me it's a pretty, pretty low print run. Number two on the list is Spider-Woman. Uh, number nine, this is the Rose Besh 1 in 25 variant. I talked about this book last week when I did my new comic book day video. I said you should grab one if you can. Um, getting it near ratio was absolutely near impossible. Um, I got a couple copies at $45 shipped. That was the cheapest I could find. And now it's selling well over $125. There's been a couple sales registered around $150. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a cool cover. This is a new artist. She hasn't done too much. She kind of has an anime style to her artwork. I just posted on Instagram this morning. Um, she has a a cover coming out for Silk number two. It's a one in 25. There's still a couple shops online selling it around $40, $40 to $50. Uh, I think that's going to sell out pretty soon, especially after I post it on Instagram. <laughs> it's probably, I'm up, I mean, I'm up to almost 1,200 uh, followers now on Instagram. So uh, a lot of my followers act on my advice. So uh, there weren't too many shops selling this book, uh, the Silk Number 2, 1 in 25 variant. It's not quite as good as this one. I think this one's a better cover. Um, but she is an up and coming artist, kind of has that. Peach Momoko vibe to her, very kind of an animated style, uh, anime style. And I, you know, who knows? Right now, there's a tension on this artist. Will it last? No one knows. But I'd say if you could get this book between ratio and maybe double ratio, that would be a good price. But yeah, right now, 125 or more. Yeah, it's you're at the top end. Who knows? Let it cool down for a while, then reassess. But it is a cool cover, no doubt about it. And I don't know a lot of shops that order 25 copies of Spider-Woman number nine. Maybe the first two or three issues of Spider-Woman, um, a lot of shops went heavier on. But let's face it, there's not, I mean, the shops near me aren't going to order 25 copies of, of this book. No way. So if you happen to have a big shop near you, that's your best bet to try to get a deal on these 1 in 25s. Um, Long term, there could be some collectability just because they could be fairly rare. Ben says here that they, you know, that there doesn't. This book doesn't seem to be that rare. Um, there are probably a dozen listings on eBay right now, so the early indication is it, it doesn't seem to be a super rare book. Not unlike Taskmaster number three, there are quite a few more for sale of this book, but um, it's still a cool cover, and I, I could see this. Maybe being a, a good cover long term, especially if the artist really takes off, uh, like like a Peach Momoko. You never know. Number one is Fantastic Four, number ninety four. Cool looking cover, cover by Kirby. Uh, it's not. It's kind of cool to see some of these older Fantastic Four books do well. Uh, it's a classic series. A lot of good books in that run. Um. Ben says we've all have probably passed this by in the back issue bins as we don't even look through the Fantastic Four runs. Maybe. Prices are still being rewritten at this point. For example, a 7.5 just sold for $330, which is $100 more than an 8.0 sold for last week. A 9.4 sold for $900, which is $100 higher than a 9.6 sold for two weeks ago. Uh, is that a spoiler Free is that as spoiler free as possible? <laughs> so I don't know the other reasons why this book is hot. Um, it is a cool looking cover. It's an you know it's an early er, early version of Fantastic Four. I'd say the first hundred issues of Fantastic Four are definitely um, pretty important books. So yeah, it's nice to see a Kirby book on the list. So that's that is your hot ten list, guys, for the week ending February 19th. Um, I am going to be out most of next week. I'm going to be um, at a golf tournament up in northern Florida. 
looking forward to that. Hopefully the weather is nice. Um, I will be posting some videos next week while I'm, while I'm up there. I'll have my laptop with me and I'll try to bring all my equipment so I can still do these videos. Um, but if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for notifications, leave me a comment, let me know what you think of this video and what you think of this list. Maybe there was something I missed that I should have mentioned. Please leave that in the comments and I will see you guys later this weekend. Thanks guys.